During the winter, hedgehogs are at their most vulnerable. We met with Sue Lewis, the owner of Rochdale Hedgehog Rescue, who has dedicated the last 30 years of her life to her dream. We came to see where it all began. My name's Susan Lewis and we're at Rochdale Hedgehog Rescue Society, where we look after sick, injured and orphaned hedgehogs and other wildlife. So I have 16 cats, three parrots and a minor bird, 11 birds of prey, uh, all waifs and strays that have needed homes, If you're passionate about one animal, you should be passionate about all animals. And I like to think that I am. I wouldn't turn anything away. Walking around Rochdale Hedgehog Rescue, it's clearly evident that Sue's passion for animals comes naturally to her. Well, we found a baby hedgehog out in the road in uh, December. In fact, it was the 13th of December, 1990. Um, and we knew that it needed help, so we brought it in. And that was the start. We had no idea what we needed to do for it, so uh, I'd heard somewhere that it would like bread and milk. We gave it some bread and milk in a big cardboard box, a towel to sleep in, and we went to bed and left it alone. Of course, when we came down the following morning, the bread and milk was everywhere. The uh, towel that we'd given it was shredded, and there was a hole in the box and no hedgehog. The hedgehog had decided it was much better behind the fridge curled up around the motor. Of course we knew after the fridge disaster that we needed to get some expert advice so we telephoned a really famous hedgehog hospital, St Tiggywinkles in Aylesbury and they told us that we needed to keep it right through till spring uh, and watch its weight and feed it this, that and the other. Uh, so with their guidance that's what we did, we kept our hedgehog till spring when we returned it to the wild. It's funny when you've got a visitor in your house, people get to hear and children knock at the door asking if they can have a look because they've never seen one. A word gets round and after we let ours go in spring, people just started turning up at the door with them. Um, this one's broken its leg, this one's lost its mum, this one's not very well and you know what to do with them, don't you? And just hand them over. Well, we didn't know what to do with them but we took them anyway. And really, that's when we started. Hedgehogs are complex creatures and require around-the-clock specialist care, but sometimes things can go very wrong. The scenario for each hedgehog is different. A lot of the hedgehogs that are here are through being autumn juveniles, meaning that they're far too small to hibernate for the winter and need to be in care. Some of them have come in through being accidents and some of them have come in through just being extremely sick. Of course, autumn juvenile should never happen. It's meant that the wildlife's confused uh, and an awful lot of hedgehogs are having second litters late in the year. Unfortunately, mum does her bit and raises them to where she would normally let them go. But of course, they're not, uh, they've not got enough time to get enough weight on for hibernation. So they're left running about in a miserable state. Of course we're always getting animals in that uh, have got a situation that we haven't come across before. Uh, at the current moment we've got one that's been tipped over um, or fallen into a pot of white gloss paint which uh, had dried and hardened on the poor soul uh, and it was most peculiar and very very stiff so we've had to remove the paint bit by bit to get it back to normal. We've also had them come in that have been uh, in the foundations of uh, concrete that's been laid and been chipped out. So uh, they've come in to have their prickles removed and the concrete taken off. Or the one that fell into a pot of super glue um, and came in and needed to be de-glued or de-stuck. Uh, there's all sorts of things come in. You're never sure what's coming through the door. 
Now, with all the work needed to be done with the animals, Sue couldn't possibly run the rescue centre alone. Everything here is done on a voluntary basis. A lot of people that come to volunteer are doing it for personal reasons, in that they can't do something with people, but they can do something with animals, because animals don't judge, which is rather nice, so it's a, they're doing a little bit of social work, if you like. I have people that have been with me for eight to ten years that started with me as young teenagers and just love being with the animals. My youngest volunteer comes with her mother who, uh, she's just five and she calls herself my junior helper. She fills the water bowls while her mum cleans the cages. So we're, we're a full range of people from different backgrounds. The experienced ones will tend to work in this room which is where the, the more uh, injured or sick animals are, the less experienced start work with those that are well on their road to recovery and release. Sue and the volunteers at the rescue centre often fundraise to be able to afford the resources for the centre to run and some years ago they had a helping hand. Some years ago now we were lucky enough to be featured in uh, a national newspaper as their Christmas love story and a lady that read the story felt that we were very worthwhile and that our dream was worth recognising. And when the lady died, she left us enough money to purpose build this 40-foot building, which is amazing. Never met her, she was from Norfolk, but she obviously cared deeply for animals. I'm hoping that she's up there looking down and she appreciates what we've done. I wish I had met her. I'd say she fulfilled my dream. Perhaps it's what I always wanted to be. Um, I just didn't know it when I was younger. If someone had told me all those years ago that it was going to be all consuming, maybe I'd have thought, oh, I don't know if I can. But now, my problem is, how could I ever stop?